this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the original Syntax News headline show. This is for the week ending September 3rd, 2022. And this week, I have a plethora of headlines to Syntax, as well as Meme of the Week, plus a bonus Meme of the Week, and a surprise Cognitive Conjecture. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I do have to make a note here. I have to be very careful with the words I use and the things that I share here because YouTube really, the algorithms are very, very sensitive to certain trigger words, which as my granddaddy used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I guess this uh, current generation feels otherwise. So let's begin with something from the National Review. Man banned from BYU game does not appear to have said racial slur authorities say. So looking at this headline, just reading it as a, a fiction piece of uh, communication or trade medium, I would say it's a fairly decent uh, created headline. You have a little bit of uh, alliteration. You have a little bit of rhyming. Man banned. Bang! Right out the gate. Kind of grabs your attention there. In a fiction sense, of course. So a man banned from BYU games. So there was a man banned. Meaning, I guess they kicked him out. But he does not appear to have said racial slur. Authorities say. So authorities, whoever that might be, have determined that he doesn't appear to have said it. Doesn't mean that he didn't say it. He just didn't appear to say it. Kind of like when you appear or don't appear court in court. If you don't appear, where are you, right? So we have adjective, pronoun in the past tense, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb. Two is adverb in future tense. Have is tangible contract adjective. If you don't agree with that, parse the word and find the earliest nativity root meaning of it, and you will see why I bank that value. Said, same thing. Adjective, past tense, racial, adjective, slur, pronoun, and then the comma functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence. Then we have authorities, tangible contract, adjective, and then tangible contract, say, which is a pronoun. Next headline. Malaysia's ex-first lady given 10 years in prison comes from Reuters. Uh, or Reuters. I think that's how you say it. So this, I guess that's her right there with the yellow in the yellow. Those of you who have read Army Regs 840-10 and are familiar with also maritime flag protocol, you'll know what the, the color yellow means when someone's wearing yellow. School buses are yellow, right? So, Malaysia is a location. X first, you see a hyphen there, that means that is a compound adjective. So, Malaysia adjective coloring X first into uh, adjective lady, adjective given, tangible contract adjective. 10, it's a number, it's a fact. Well, it's not a fact here because not, it has not been positioned as such, but we know what a number is, so that's a tangible contract adjective. Years is tangible contract adjective. And then prison is a pronoun. So I wonder why she's been given 10 years in prison. From what I've seen, I think it has to do with receiving bribes. Uh, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know what, what, is, uh, what, what is wrong with someone paying you to do something and then you do it. Um, I guess there needs to be a little bit more context, but 10 years in prison, in a Malaysian prison, that's that's pretty stiff, guys. I mean, this is just my opinion. That's a little bit stiff. I mean, in my opinion, I think that prisons and jails and things like that should be for violent offenders. People who maliciously, physically, 
mentally uh, harm other people. But to accept bribes and be given 10 years in prison, that's a little extreme, fellas. Next headline also comes from National Review. Connecticut assistant principal placed on leave after admitting to anti-Catholic discrimination. Now, one thing that uh, a couple people have mentioned to me is, uh, why don't I go over the particles of negation? I feel like, you know, it is a very uh, rudimentary beginner thing to do that. Although it is fun for those just starting out to pick those types of things out. I just kind of leave that on the shelf. But I will do it from time to time and I'll do it here as per a viewer request. So if we look here, we see assistant. We see a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of assistant. A vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation. It's no contract. Why is that, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked because I will give you a little bit of closure here. Caveat, if you want in-depth, detailed closures on why a vowel in front of a consonant is no contract, particle of negation, feel free to study my syntax playlist on this channel. It has many, many videos. The whole channel has over 400 videos giving all sorts of closure to the complete correct sentence structure curriculum. But for now, long story short, if you syntax vowels and consonants, you will find that vowels will maintain a condition of state of non-tangibility and consonants will maintain a condition of state of tangible, con ta uh, tangible contract. So vowels pretty much either function as modifiers or thinking, i.e. verbs or adverbs, although they can also be pronouns in certain situations. So in this sense, the vowel is basically functioning as thinking, as a verb, adverb or verb type of thinking. But there's nothing to think about yet. So putting a vowel in front of a consonant means you're putting the thinking before you do, before there's something to think about. Okay? You have to have something to think about before you can start thinking. You have to have a cause. So in a vowel in front of a consonant scenario, you don't have that. That's why it's a particle of negation. And then uh, ED is a particle of negation in place simply because it negates the now space. And then, of course, EO in front of N and the ON is uh, no contract. A in front of F and AFTER. A in front of D and admitting. ING and admitting is also a particle of negation. Why? Because it's a modifier. It's a gerund modifier. It modifies the condition of state of the word it's attached to. TO is a particle of negation because it is future tense. Any suffix or prefix that negates the now space is considered a particle of negation. Anti, of course, our vowel in front of a consonant. And then DIS is uh, also no contract. That's pretty self-exclamatory. So we have adjective, 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 pronoun in the past tense, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, future tense, adjective, and pronoun. Um, well, that's unfortunate that uh, any discrimination is happening. But is discrimination a bad thing? Asking for a friend. Because if you think about what discriminating means, like it can be a positive thing too. Like you could say, uh, uh, I like to drink uh, ginger beers, right? And fever tree is for those who have discriminating tastes, right? Ah, so it can be a positive thing. So if you're admitting to anti-Catholic, which means no Catholic discrimination, is that a good thing? Next headline comes from USA Today. U.S. warns Americans of kidnappings in Mexico after increase in drug cartel violence. Um... The State Department issued travel warnings for Americans traveling to Mexico after increase in drug cartel violence at popular vacation spots. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you from first-hand knowledge, from having developed very, very uh, close friendships with some individuals who have lived in Mexico, born in Mexico, raised in Mexico, 
and have family in Mexico that this, what they're talking about here, has been going on for many, many, many years. Hence, that's why a lot of these individuals risk everything they have to get themselves and their families to this side of the border. So this is nothing new and it's unfortunate and I hope that uh, it gets you know resolved at some point for sure. Fox News brings us this headline, which is hey, some sort of Hollywood thing here. Sharon Stone reveals a relationship with a younger man ended after she refused to get Botox. Uh, well, you can see the, the syntax here. I'll just talk about this in a fiction sense. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure how old Sharon Stone is. I really, I'm really not. Um, what is Botox? I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit behind the times here. I didn't really do my research on this particular headline. Is Botox something uh, painful or something detrimental? Not sure what that is. Anyways, um, you know, Sharon Stone, as Tesla said, love is all around you. Next headline comes from Yahoo News. A pregnant Texas woman who claimed her unborn baby counts as a passenger in the HOV lane is ticketed again. Wow, that's a mouthful. Let me try and say that in my best uh, news anchor voice. From NBC News, we have... A pregnant Texas woman who claimed her unborn baby counts as a passenger in the HOV lane is ticketed again. Well, I guess Texas does not consider uh, life forms being carried inside of other life forms as life forms. So I can see how that uh, would generate a, tic a ticket in the fiction sense here. So that's unfortunate. I know when I lived in Arizona, a lot of people would just put like dummies, like literal dummies or blow up dolls in the passenger seat to get in the HOV lane. I myself was in an HOV lane. Uh, I was driving home. Get this. When I was at my, at my job in Arizona, I would drive like 40 minutes to work in the morning. But coming home, it would be like an hour and a half to get home. So sometimes I would unfortunately, you know, take the shortcut of going into HOV lane, HOV lane. And boom, dude got me with the radar gun pulled up on me. He apologized as he handed me the ticket. It was a 400 and some dollar ticket. What a racket. I mean, really, for real, what a racket. With this next headline, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you an in-depth syntax lesson. Now, I'm not talking about a parse lesson disguised as a syntax lesson. No, I'm talking about an actual syntax lesson to give you closure on an issue that not too many people know about. And it's all for you, my gift. So this one comes from E.T., which is extraterrestrial or entertainment tonight or whatever. <laughs> Royal family feels disappointed after Meghan Markle's interview claims. Source. So we're looking at the syntax of this. When I teach syntax, I always teach to start from the end and look at everything. Because that's rule one equal uh, judge mechanics, ladies and gentlemen. You got to have the whole story. You can't just go in and just pick out this, that, or the third. You got to look at the whole thing. And the most efficient, effective way of doing it without making any mistakes at all is to go from the, the rear and go backwards. So the first question we ask, is the word tangible or non-tangible contract? So in this case, claims is tangible. Interview is tangible. Marco is tangible. Megan is tangible. After is non-tangible. So that, my friends, is an adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun scenario. Source is in parentheses, so we would not syntax that. It's not on the page as per the four-corner rule. If you were to syntax it in its own little box, it would be a pronoun because it's standing by itself. So then we have a space and then one of those 
dollar store quotations, otherwise known as apostrophes, functioning as quotations. And then we have disappointed and then a, a apostrophe and then a space. So that's a break in the continuance of the evidence. Disappointed is in the uh, same rule as source, the four corner rule. And disappointed, if, if you wanted to syntax it by itself, standing by itself, which it is, it would be syntaxed as a pronoun in the past tense. Now then it leaves you with feels family royal, which is a pronoun Adjective, adjective. Royal is a tangible contract adjective, modifying family into a tangible contract adjective. And then feels is a tangible contract pronoun. Now people are going to say, ho, ho, hold up, Jason. Wait, wait a minute. They're probably, they're probably having a hyper hernia right now. There's an L-Y there. That, that's, that's an adverb. Or, you know, that's non-tangible. Ah, not so, not so. And this is the syntax lesson I'm telling you about. I'm going to show you why family is tangible contract, even though it has the L-Y at the end. Here we go. I go to my trusty etymological source. One of my etymological sources for a continuance of the evidence. And I'm going to type in the word family. Okay. So we go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. Also, we look at the particles of the word. As you see here, nowhere is L-Y designated as a separate particle of the word. Nowhere. Nowhere. Now to give you a continuous evidence for that, let's look at a word like lightly look right here ly is clearly credentialed as a separate particle as a suffix with family this is not so it comes from latin familia which means the same thing in spanish these days because it is latin based language so let me go down further here, and I see Old English. Now, Old English predates early 15th century, okay? So that's what we're interested in. We're, we're interested in the earliest nativity root meanings of words. So Old English, ham, village, home, see home. So let's look up home. Dwelling, abode, residence. From Proto-Indo-European, that's pretty early, which is a form of the root thing. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for the root. And that means settle, dwell. I have a tangible contract with settling and dwelling and home. Don't you? So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. Family is tangible contract because ly does not function as a particle of negation in the word it's tangible contract i've just provided a continuance of evidence for you and this is how you would back up your document contract postal vessel court venues using correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar if you need to you would have to educate someone on why you're banking the values you're banking something the fiction doesn't do so there you go. Family. Tangible contract. Who'd have thought? So this is a segment where I'm actually going to syntax on the spot. And I thought this was an interesting headline, so I'm going to show you the whole post before I zoom in on it. West Point has a KKK plaque mounted above the entrance above entrance to Science Hall. And I guess this is a picture of it. It says Ku Klux Klan, right? So that's very interesting. So let's bring this a little bit closer so we can syntax it. So as I mentioned in the other post, we'll start at the end and work backwards and we ask ourselves about the tangibility or non-tangibility of each word. Now you can certify these things using the etymology dictionary that I showed you, etymologyonline.com, or any other etymology dictionary you might choose to use as they all do have the same earliest nativity root meanings of words. So we have hall, which is tangible, science, 
tangible and n2 is non-tangible. So we have enough information to move forward. Hall is going to be pronoun, sciences, tangible contract, adjective, coloring hall into a pronoun, and two, of course, is future tense, non-tangible contract, adverb. So once you hit that adverb, as I mentioned in last week's Now Space News, this can be taken away. And now we start from entrance. It's like starting fresh. Is entrance tangible or non-tangible? Entrance is indeed tangible. It's a tangible contract verb. Why? Because it's being modified into a verb by non-tangible contract adverb above. Again, we fit that adverb. We take that away. Now we have mounted plaque, KKK, etc., etc. Mounted is going to be tangible contract pronoun in the past tense being colored by tangible contract plaque, being colored by tangible contract KKK, and then A is non-tangible contract adverb modifying KKK into an adjective. And then we have West Point has, which those are all tangible contract. And as we know, nothing can follow a pronoun except for breaking the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, which any way you slice it, that's the scenario we have right here. Now, someone may say, how, how can has be tangible contract, Jason? Well, in this sense, it doesn't really matter whether it's tangible or non-tangible. It's still going to be a pronoun. However, for purposes of closure, look up has. You'll get the same uh, etymology as have and things like that. And you will find the earliest nativity root meaning of those words is tangible contract. Now we'll move on to meme of the week. When you homeschool your kids, kids, let's say children, and make them watch the video of BBC reporting the fall of Building 7 on 9-11 while it was still standing perfectly fine in the background. YouTube. If you want to cause some sort of commotion or feel some sort of way about this meme, I can show you and give you a link to the YouTube video of this thing that they're talking about. It did happen. So it's not any type of misinformation. It did happen, okay? Just before you decide to feel some sort of way about it. Now for the bonus meme of the week. Secretary of State John Kerry said, perhaps the media would do us all a service if they didn't cover it quite as much. People wouldn't know what's going on. It meaning whatever the latest fear factor is, okay? It applies across the board, ladies and gentlemen. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have the cognitive conjecture portion of the program. And I definitely don't want to disappoint with this one. And I don't think it will, because it has to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And if you've watched uh, the last few episodes of For the Now Space News, some familiar names. So let's look at this web page here. This uh, YouTube channel is called colon foreign hyphen correspondent, period. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw you to the fact that these two words have particles of negation in them. F-O-R-E is a particle of negation because it negates the now space. And also, if you look at co-respondent, R-E is also a particle of negation. So that's no in and no spondent. And then we have the sentence here, for the joinder hyphen method as a contract Canada Constitution Treaty citizen. Oh, where do I begin? As is not a correct positional because we don't know, or I don't know, and I've never been shown what it's congruent with. If we have four positionals, four of, with, by. Four is congruent with by. Of is congruent with with. For is cause. Of is concern. With is possessive. By is authority. One word, one meaning, rule one, rule equal, one congruency, one function. Where does as fit into that? 
And then we have the word contract here. If you look it up, C-O-N-T-R-A is a particle of negation. So that means no tract. Canada is a location, or at least I think it is. If it had a tilde in front of it, I would know that. Uh, so for the joint amendment as a contract came, blah, 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 is with the contact of the, this colon I guess represents of the, secretary. Now, S-E in front of a hard consonant is also a particle of negation, so that's no criteria. And then we have another incorrect positional, on, because what's the congruent with on? Off. Off the contract, can it can it, of the secretary, on the... So then, because they're using incorrect positionals, I have no idea what this colon would mean. And then we have this individual here, of your joinder volition with the now space closure methods by this message claim, <laughs> and no full stop at the end, so... Irregardless, the whole thing's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar. Now let's go on to the actual piece that I want to look at. Now I'm just going to read this straight up. For this copyright, copy claim, 1775, July 1, through this now date, by this federal postal judge and federal judge, claimant federal postal judge, plenipotentiary judge and of the. So you have by this and then all this stuff here and then you have and of this. So what's happening on this side of the conjunction is certainly not happening on this side. That's a violation. Not to mention there's multiple other ones, but I just wanted to point that out. Postmaster bank banker. Wow. And then colon Russell J. Gould's knowledge and colon claimants postmasters herein is with this performance claim of this DCFPSFCVP foreign again particle of negation postal treaty corporation number and then a colon RN all right so ladies and gentlemen for those of you advanced in correct sentence structure Show me the mathematical interface in this sentence. Read it backwards. Do the facts maintain the same value forwards as they do backwards? That's a rhetorical question, ladies and gentlemen. Because if you see the beginning of it, no matter what's in between, the beginning of it, you see for this. And at the end, after the word number, you see a colon and then a space. And that's of the. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. So if you were to flip this and read it backwards, it would have to begin with with the RN598, which is not correct because every correct sentence structure must start with a cause for the. And this wouldn't when you read it backwards. Not to mention through, after July 1st, you see through, T H R O U G H. What's congruent with through? We have four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. What's through congruent with? What function does that serve? It can't serve the function of cause. It can't serve the function of concern. Those are already taken. One and one is one. Rule one, rule equal. So it's something different. And you have, there's only one cause per sentence, one authority per sentence. Here we have an authority before you even hit the verb. So that breaks the mathematical interface. And of course, incorrect colon mechanics after the ampersand and particles and negation in the verbs and no closure on the uh, abbreviations. Although, you know, I mean, that can be overlooked. I haven't seen the whole document, so they may give closure elsewhere. But in any case, the author of this does not appear, judging by the performance, to have closure on the grammar. So whoever you are, author of that document, if you would like to fill in the gaps of your grammar knowledge, if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and get closure on it with humility, honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, feel free to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a grammar workshop. And we'll see what we can do for you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps it up for this week. It's a, it's a pretty involved one. 
Let me know how you like it in the comments, if you like it like this, or if you like it maybe a little bit lighter, because this one is a little bit heavier on knowledge content and value content as far as syntax knowledge and things like that, and also correct sentence structure knowledge. So let me know how you feel about it. I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate you coming aboard and, and participating with this. And I really appreciate your comments, viewership, all that stuff. You can become a member, hit the join button, and check out the details on that. If you want to do a grammar workshop, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, just contact me at the email address and I'll set up a consultation for you. 10 to 15 minute video consultation. I'll provide the venue and we'll see if that is exactly what you want to do. And if you want me to teach you, you can ask me whatever you want when you, when you uh, hop on board that vessel as a guest. And, uh, well... Yeah, that about does it. We'll see you next week. Take care. Salute.